G'day, thanks for tuning in. Today it's a little bit overcast, as you can see out here. The weather's a little bit colder. We're here in eastern New South Wales, northeast New South Wales, in the subtropical climate. And it's starting to turn a little bit more chilly. So I thought we'd talk about overwintering today. Now, I will point out that we don't actually really get a winter here, as far as the bees are concerned. The bees are European honeybees, so they're adapted to European climate. And um, that means they can survive really cold, snowy winters. And that's the whole reason that they collect so much honey when there's lots of flowers for them. So you can see here that our bees are still going in and out. And um, of course, I'm in a t-shirt, so you can tell it's probably only about, I don't know, it's about 18 degrees Celsius. And um, so yeah, the bees are still foraging. I can smell some really pungent melaleuca nectar coming in. It's very smelly. And so I, can, I know the bees are getting on that without even looking. But I thought we'd talk about some overwintering today and go into this hive. As you can see, the bees haven't really filled this super because we haven't really had a strong flow for quite a while and I think this melaleuca flow might be just a little bit of a kind of weaker flow. The melaleuca tends to pulse a little bit um, after rain. So just thought we'd go into here and talk about some things you can do if you do live in a cold climate and um, what steps you might take to get your bees through a colder winter. Um, so obviously this is not something we have much experience with here on the north coast of New South Wales. But um, first thing to talk about, I guess, is the amount of food that your bees need and the amount that they have to get through the winter. So if you've got a, what looks like an empty super like this, you may want to consider pulling it off for the winter. And we'll show you how to do that. Um, and I should say too, please, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below and we'll try and answer them. So we might um, talk a little bit about feeding. If you don't have much honey in your hive, you may want to think about feeding your bees with sugar water. I've just got a little feeder here. And the great thing about this is that it goes straight over the top of this hole. You can see it's got a little kicked out part here. Just goes straight in there. This is not a flow hive product, it's just a generic hive top feeder you can get from any bee supply store. Um, and you fill this with your sugar water. The bees can actually climb up through here, this hole. And this is the cover, they climb over that hump and access the sugar water through there and it drops slowly down as they feed on it and that they can just take it as they want to. Another type of feeder to use is a jar. So just pretend this is a jar lid and the jar is inverted. You've got some holes in your lid like this. You put your sugar water in the jar, screw the lid on and you invert your jar and you put that straight over the hole and the sugar will just, the sugar water will slowly drip through and the bees will take that down. We've got a couple of other ways to feed your bees. These are just also generic feeders. These are called frame feeders and they sit in your brood box. You can see there's a ladder down here for the bees to climb down. You just basically fill this whole reservoir with sugar water and that can last quite a long time. The bees just climb up and down this ladder to access the, the sugar water. And then here's another one. They've got little floats down the bottom and when you fill these, you fill it into the middle and the floats float up and the bees can then just rest on the floats and suck up the sugar water. And these just go in place of a brood frame in your brood box like that. And it can be a really good idea just to help get your bees through the winter depending on how much 
winter forage they can get or whether they can even fly through the winter. What type of sugar do you use for the sugar water? So you need to use plain white sugar. It's quite important that it's very simple sugar because um, brown sugar or um, raw sugar will actually give the bees dysentery. The white sugar has been processed so that it's a very simple sugar and you just mix that plain white sugar with water in either a one to one or a two to one ratio. So um, one part sugar to one part water or two parts sugar to one part water depending on you, what you want to do. So there's a whole lot of um, there's a whole lot of different opinions on how much and when to feed and it's a great idea to get in touch with experienced beekeepers in your area, in your climate as to what you want to do. But basically the rule of thumb is um, if you want to stimulate brood rearing in the colony and um, make the bees act like there's a honey flow on, you'll feed them the thin sugar, which is the one to one. If you want them to actually store that sugar water away like they store honey, um, then mix a thicker syrup. So that's two parts sugar to one part water. So you may want to do that. You may want to experiment with that if you need to feed your bees. You might want to feed them thicker sugar water before winter, going into winter, so that they put on those stores and so that the hive is quite heavy. And you can heft your hive and you, honey's quite heavy, the sugar water's heavy, so you, you can feel how much food they've got quite easily by just hefting your hive. But we might go in and check out how much honey is in the brood box and how much honey is in the brood frames. Yeah, we have a question from Richard on the Facebook Live. He says, do you recommend feeding with the flow super on? Don't you risk sugar, water, honey? Yes, that's a very good question. So it really depends on your climate as to the decision you need to make there. Um, and also the thickness of your mixture. So if you've got a very cold winter where the bees aren't actually flying, you want to you want them to put sugar put you want them to store food in the brood box you may want to have another brood box um, for just their own honey stores and um, you might want them to put weight on just before they go into winter so in that case you'd probably remove this this super so that's if you're feeding the thick sugar if you're just feeding thin sugar, they, they won't store that as honey, they'll just consume it and they'll just use it as their ongoing fuel. So they, there's not much danger of them storing the sugar water as, as honey in your super. So um, I'll just light a smoker here. I've just got, I've been always really bad at lighting fires, maybe that's a good thing. So I just roll up some cardboard like this because I find it really easy way to light a smoker. Just roll it up into a tube and if you've got a lighter that works as well. quick and easy way and then once that's burnt down a little bit you can add fuel of your choice spark or I've got some pine needles here which burn really well but this cardboard's going to do well for us for a while and I'll put my suit on sometimes when the bees are working a melaleuca flow, it can make them quite grumpy. I was just keeping my bees at my place and checking them yesterday and they were really, really grumpy. So a little bit of smoke in the entrance. If you're just joining us, we're talking about tips you can use to 
overwinter your bees. So please, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below and we'll try and answer them. I can already feel from just lifting the super that it's maybe actually a third full. I just kind of know that from having to lift so many. And if you lift it off, you can actually have a little bit of a look underneath. You put it on its end. You can see there's a lot of bees in there working. Can't quite see through my bale, but you might, you might see some honey, you might not. Can be a quick way to do it, but we'll have a look at in there after we've had a look in the brood box. And straight away you can tell the population of bees just by looking on the queen excluder. Richard has just messaged back saying in Texas, if they have honey in the super, they remove the queen excluder to allow the queen to move up with the cluster so she does not freeze. That's right. So that, just shake these bees off. So in cold climates, when the bees don't fly, they cluster to keep warm in a ball. So they're not really good at moving side to side in that cluster, or they, although they do, but they will move up as they consume their honey. So if the bee cluster moves up and the queen excluder is on, the bees all go through the excluder and leave the queen behind, and then the queen starves and freezes. So if you're leaving your super on full of honey, which can be a great idea, then take your queen excluder off for the winter, and then once your winter is over, you can go through and find your queen, put her back down in the brood box, and put your excluder back on, ready for spring. So, I'm just gonna go through and have a look at the population and the honey stores. So hopefully there's plenty of honey down in this box. For the, to get the bees through winter. So I can feel this frame's kind of light. It's actually, it actually broke. I'll have to get that one out later. That's a good thing to show actually. Sometimes if you put a nail in the top of your brood frame going down when you go to pull it out, the bees have propolized everything really, really hard. And this nail just pulls straight out. So what you can do is put a nail that way through the end bar and that way it doesn't pull out when you try and getting a frame out. I'll go for the other end, the other side. Really sticky with propolis. You can see this frame has been really propolized up. The bees aren't using this at all. They've just stuck it to the side. It's a really old, old frame. Some really old honey here, which if it gets cold, the bees will still consume. They can still access it, but this frame probably needs to be switched out at some point. And to do that, we'll just cut this, cut all this wax out and you can keep it and melt it or burn it. So there's nothing in that frame really for the bees. And that's the same story. Just a little bit of old honey. You see it's old because it's got really dark cappings. And there's no new nectar around it. And usually if it's new honey, the cappings will be quite light and there'll be liquid nectar in the cells that's still uncapped. So here we go, here we can see some liquid nectar. So we know that it's coming in right now. Well, hopefully the camera's picking that up, but you can see it's shiny. These cells are full of the liquid nectar, which the bees will dehydrate and turn into honey. So that's a really good sign for us 
and um, I can smell it. I know that it's the, the paper bark, the melaleuca. There's some more here coming in. So hopefully that'll be a good amount to help get these bees through a little bit of a colder spell. If you've got any ideas or tips for wintering, please um, put them down in the comments section. How do you insulate a hive? What do you do? Good question. So I think the most important place to insulate is the top because that's where all the hot air from the bees, from the bee cluster goes. So a really good source of um, information is a guy called Frederick Dunn, who runs a really great YouTube channel. And his take on that is, he puts, he lives in a really, really cold area in the top of the States. And he puts, I believe, a big block of foam up on top of the inner cover. And it just helps with um, stopping condensation happening on the roof and makes the condensation more run down the walls of the hive so it's not dripping down onto the colony. So I think I have seen a photo which I thought was really great of two, I think it's on the Flow fax page, um, two, two hives like that with lots of um, hay bales built up around them to form a little shed with a piece of um, tin over the top and lots of hay on top of that and it looked like a cosy little spot for your hives. I think getting them out of the wind is a really good idea as well if you've got really cold winds. Kathy on the Facebook Live wants to know why the wax is black. The wax is black just because it's really old and what happens is the bees mix it with propolis but they also just are tramping stuff all over it all the time. And also if it's had brood go through it, it'll turn darker. You can see here is a good example. That is new yellow wax just here. And then this section, it's obvious that it's had brood in it before because it's a bit more brown. When the brood, um, when it pupates, the, um, the bees leave a, a cocoon inside the cell. So every time there's a cycle of brood through there, there's a cocoon built up. And with those black frames, there's obviously been a lot of cocoons go through there and the bees have tramped all over the comb for quite a long time. But also you can see, it's actually, it feels different as well to the new wax. It's really quite hard, especially these parts. That's been propolized up. You can see how hard it is for me to cut it. Whereas this, a little bit easier. And that new comb is very easy to cut. We have a question from YouTube. Um, they're asking if, if the old comb affects the honey taste. I don't believe that it does, but um, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, if you've got a flow hive situation, you probably won't be getting honey from your brood box. Um, if you're just taking honeycomb and eating honeycomb out of this coloured wax, it's not going to taste as nice. That new white, brand new white wax that just melts in the mouth is really amazing to eat honeycomb from. Um, but having said that, if you're extracting honey, I don't think it changes the flavour of the honey when you've got that old comb. Some beekeepers like to change out their frames quite regularly, and some just like to leave them for a really long time. But it's important to note that your old wax can harbour all kinds of things that the bees bring in, whether it be fungal spores or some form of pesticide or 
whatever the bees are picking up from the outside world, the wax will hold. So it can be good, a good idea to change your frames out every couple of years. Brian from the Facebook Live um, wants to know how many frames should be filled to sustain a harsh winter? Roughly six months of cold weather. Six months is probably a fairly long time. So what I would suggest is maybe you want to try having two brood boxes. So you've got the nest box and then maybe you want another either another deep box or maybe a medium box and the flow hive is compatible with Langstroth size boxes so you can just if you want to buy a medium box just buy a generic medium and leave that for the bees so don't put a queen excluder there put it up above your medium box so that they've got plenty of forage um, stored away for that six months of winter time and then you might want to put your flow super on top of that box and that is for your consumption. So um, it really differs from area to area and it's a great idea to consult with your local beekeeper who um, is experienced in those conditions to know. But I'd say that's a, a pretty good way to do it. Then you're not sort of wondering if your bees have got enough food in a single box and, um, and you, you're sort of not sure if they're going to make it through winter. Hopefully that helps. Like I say, we don't really get a winter here. So, um, trying to talk about cold winters, I don't have that much experience with them because our bees fly all winter, we can just leave the supers on. We've got to make sure that we leave enough honey for them when they don't have much around. But. Um, Generally, we just leave the supers on here and leave them a couple of frames of honey. You can see these guys have got a little bit of chalk brood just in here. Just a little bit. So that's a, that's a fungus that dries out the larva and turns them into this chalky little mummy. And then that can set your hive back quite a ways. So the, the way to um, help with that is to move them into the sun, which this hive is already got, getting lots of sun. So you may need a little more ventilation. Or another way is to simply re-queen with a queen that, with a queen that has um, the genetic tendency to encourage the hive to clean out. And they're called hygienic tendencies. So you can see here that there's lots of food for the hive, lots of pollen, not heaps of honey in the brood box, but it's coming in. You can see in between the pollen, there's all that shiny nectar. And so because we didn't get a strong spring flow here, which we normally do, um, we're sort of hoping that this little burst of melaleuca will help us get through. We have a question from Mike on the Facebook Live. He says, is honey bee healthy formula too strong to be used in a top round feeder? He installed a package and started feeding, but when the formula is added to the syrup, the bees don't seem to eat as much. Yeah, right. Well, that's, that's a really good observation. Um, so I know that's a supplement that is used in the States. I'm not sure if we can get it here so I don't have any experience with it but I think probably you can form your opinion from your own observation and um, see if you stop putting honeybee healthy in the food whether the bees will go back and eat it some more. Um, you may just want to tweak the quantity that you're using and see what happens there. Generally if um, Generally here, the bees are getting a lot of different colours of pollen, which is their protein food. And um, you can see they've got a quite a varied diet. But in a colder climate where they're not bringing in lots of pollen, 
um, pollen, you may need to feed them a, pod, a pollen patty as well as sugar water just to make sure that they're staying healthy. And Kathy on the Facebook Live wants to know if the second brood box will stay on permanently. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, that's right. So it just makes for a larger population of bees. So you have a larger cluster, but also the bees will be able to store a lot more honey in that region. And the larger cluster will keep warm um, a little better as long as they've got enough food to last them. So if you've got two boxes and they contain food over here, brood in the middle, and then the, the second box just mostly contains food for them, they'll probably be fine. And then your excluder on top, you can take the flow super on and off as necessary for the winter or not and um, go from there and see how you go and whether that's something that will give you success or not. Um, a lot of beekeepers have a lot of different theories on single brood boxes and double brood boxes. So it's uh, like anything in beekeeping, it's always a little bit of a contentious point, but whatever works for you, is, um, is the way to go. So we'll have a look in the super and see what's in here. I will say that having two brood boxes, if you're just a beginner, can be a little bit overwhelming because there's a whole lot more bees that are built up and a lot more lifting. Straight away, there's not many bees up here. There's a lot of hive beetle. I may have just busted them out of jail, perhaps. The bees chase the hive beetle and put them in jail, usually up on top of the frames. So I've got to squash all these guys. Hive beetle is quite a problem in this area. Um, and I imagine it's not in more cold climates. Mark has messaged in on YouTube. He says he has a Flow Hive 2 Plus. Should he be closing the rear vent and use the entrance reducer to help with warmth? Yeah, you can, you can do that um, and see how they go. It depends what climate you're in and how cold your winter is in. Is, but um, So closing the vent, meaning this back cover here. If you have these pointing upwards, air can get into the front, uh, get into the hive past this tray. The tray contacts the back here, and um, the air can get up. If you flip it over, the air is blocked, so any air that passes through here goes down beneath the tray. So that's how you would block the ventilation. There's a lot of different. Um, theories on ventilating for winter and for summer and so I would recommend talking to your local beekeepers again seeing what they do seeing what they think works for them um, personally I like a lot of ventilation down the bottom here a lot of people like top ventilation as well a lot of people don't like it so it's it's one of those things that you might need to just try and tweak and see how you go um, and for the front, I would say leave, probably leave your entrance open and you may not need to reduce it. Once again, it's just a personal preference and see what happens. Um, if you're in a climate that snows and, and mice might crawl into your hive, you may need to reduce the entrance to guard against the mice. Um, a lot of beekeepers do that, but they actually just end up using screens so that the, the bees still have ventilation through that entrance. So once again, these flow frames are quite light on, but you can see this new nectar. So if this were a really cold climate and we weren't getting any forage coming in, what I would recommend to do is actually 
harvest, I might lay that down here, harvest whatever is left in these frames and pull the whole super off. And to, so to do that, obviously you insert your flow key, you turn it, you harvest the honey, and you leave the frame in the open position inside the hive. And because the bees can't then put nectar in the frames because they're open like that, they're not in cells like that, then they'll just lick them all clean, they'll lick all the honey off and they'll clean them up really nicely. And then you can just take your frames out or take your whole super off. You may want to just put your whole super in a plastic garbage bag and put it in the deep freezer. That will stop any pests and diseases and it won't hurt your frames at all. Um, another way to store them is to put them in a UV proof tub. So just a black plastic tub and put them away in the shed or in the cupboard somewhere where the light can't get them. Um, as the plastic is UV sensitive, so it's not UV sensitive for an hour, but if you're leaving it out all winter, then it probably is. So here we can see there's quite a bit of honey that's ready for the bees to eat. And here's actually a thing that I get asked a lot and you can see this cell line is actually out of whack. So when it, this, uh, this frame's been harvested, this cell hasn't actually made it back into the closed position. So what you can do here is take a knife or your hive tool and stick it down in between and just break this wax seal. Just move the bees out of the way. Watch out. Flip it over and do the other side. Lots of bees there. If you've got a skinny knife, it works a lot better than a hive tool because you can get right through the middle of the cell line to the other side. And then if we've got a flow key, which is just over there, you can reset that hopefully. You've got to make sure you put it into the top slot because if you put it in the bottom, you'll end up harvesting your frame. So you want to put your key in the top slot just to move that cell line back into position. Hopefully we've busted it free enough that it will move in. So you can put it under tension with the key too. And then just keep breaking that wax and propolis apart and hopefully the cell line will move back. I may need to get a knife to do this. Watch out. You can see it started to move. You can see it's pretty much set. But if you keep the key in, Keep that under tension, should move back in. So now the bees should be able to start using that. They'll clean that, all that wax up and they'll start filling that cell line up. Any more questions? Troy wants to know, is it okay to harvest honey from this hive over winter? Will there be enough food in the brood box for them? No, I wouldn't do that. Um, this hive in particular, it's, it's kind of not really chockers. Um, doesn't have that much honey. So I would leave this hive. Um, again, we don't get much of a winter here. The bees still fly, they're still getting forage. And so they will just kind of keep ticking over all the way through winter. Um, having said that, they do get hungry at times. So um, 
I would definitely leave this honey for them. If we were to get an extended period of dearth, which means no food, no flowers for the bees, um, we may need to consider feeding this hive. But um, we just keep monitoring it. Just we monitor all the hives and, and see what we need to do. But like I keep saying, hopefully this little burst of Melaleuca here will get us through. Just keep looking at these flow frames. Sometimes when you're just looking at the back, it can be a great way of seeing how much honey you've got, but oftentimes the bees will keep the honey away from that window. As you can see they've done here, they've either eaten this part or they haven't filled it up and they've got honey in here. So this can be a little deceptive. So you can see, oh, that's a pretty good patch of honey. That's quite a bit of food for them, coupled with the other frame. Um, Richard on the Facebook Live wants to know if you have dark comb in the brood box that has brood in it, how do you manage to swap it out? Do you just sacrifice the brood? That's a great question. Um, the answer is no, you don't have to. If you've got a second box on your hive. So what you can do first, if you've got a flow set up like this with a single brood box and a super is put your queen excluder in between the two boxes so the queen can't get up and well take your brood frame that you want to swap out and place it in here so take one of your flow frames out and store it make sure you keep this cover on so that because obviously that's open now to the outside world. So you want to keep that cover on and close the hive up. Um, put that brood frame in there. This cover needs to be on as well. And wait for those bees to all hatch out from the cells. Once they've emerged from the cells, the queen won't be able to lay in there anymore because she's downstairs. She can't come up because of the queen excluder. So your frame will be empty and ready to pull out. Um, that's quite an easy way to do it. If you've got a second brood box, then um, just do the same thing. Put the queen excluder in between them so the queen can't come up and start laying in the empty frame and um, wait for that brood to hatch out. All the nurse bees will actually come up through the excluder. They'll smell the brood and they'll look after the brood if it needs looking after or they'll keep it warm if it's already capped and pupating. Um, so they still look after it even though it's upstairs and um, yeah then you can pull your frame out and just cut the comb out of the frame with a knife or your hive tool and what I generally do is put it in uh, a container and just put it in the freezer and then when I've got enough I have a um, slow cooker that's just dedicated to wax and I put a little bit of water in the slow cooker and then all my wax in there and just turn it on. And then after a day I turn it off again, the wax sets, uh, the water, the wax is actually lighter than the water, the water falls to the bottom and all the junk falls to the bottom of the wax. So then when you pull the, pull the wax out when it's cool, it's a big block, you can scrape all the junk off and then you might want to do that again and again until you've got really, really pure wax. The other way you can do it is pour it out through a filter and you'll have your nice pure wax. I might put this flow frame back. Harry on our YouTube live wants to know if the queen lays in winter in areas such as South East Queensland. Yeah, that's a great question. Yes, the queen definitely does in South East Queensland and Northern New South Wales. Um, we don't generally need to do much prep for winterizing our hives apart from making sure they've got a bit of food left because the bees are still foraging, the queen's laying, the bees still have brood and all's going on as normal. The only thing that's a little bit different is the bees aren't expanding. So they're not really brooding up, they just sort of go into a little bit of a holding pattern because the more bees there are, the more food is needed. So they sort of tend to customize their population according to 
the amount of food they have and the amount of food that's coming in. And I guess the build up in sp just before springtime is a little bit of a gamble by the bees because they're gambling on there being lots of food available in the next three weeks or so when the, the queen starts laying ready for that food to come in. So they sort of, they're sort of gambling their population on the fact that there's gonna be a really big spring flow. Or whenever your flow is, the bees just will seem to brood up for that flow. Um, the other thing you can do if you've got more than one hive is to actually equalize their resources. So if you've got one sort of weak hive or an okay hive and you've got one quite strong hive, then you may want to swap some honey back and forth or some extra bees, shake some extra bees in. Just be careful you don't shake the queen in. Give them some extra brood maybe just to sort of balance everything out. Make sure there's plenty of food in both for the winter time. Um, and that can be a really great way to, to learn about how much is needed and the general health of your colony as well, just by a comparison. If you've got a really cold winter, I did say before, a, an easy way to tell how much honey stores they've got left is just to come along and give them a little bit of a lift. And say, oh, that hive's pretty heavy. Maybe this one's a bit light. So you might need to feed these ones perhaps. And um, this is in a really cold winter, obviously. Any more questions? So how do you know when they need feeding? Well, it's kind of a, that's kind of a tricky question to answer properly, but you may want to feed them going into winter to make sure they've got enough food to go through winter. They call it putting on weight for the winter. Um, if they're light, like I just said, if they feel light, if you know they didn't have much winter food ready, readily available when you pack them down for winter, then I would suggest feeding. You can feed liquid sugar or you can feed fondant. You can also feed dry sugar. Some people just pour dry sugar on top of the inner cover or on top of some newspaper on the brood box. Um, once, once again, I recommend getting in touch with your local beekeepers and seeing what they do and how they get their bees through winter, how much they feed, um, what to feed, how often to feed. Generally around here, we don't have to feed very much. If we do feed, it's, it's in summertime when there's hardly any nectar uh, available for the bees. So it's kind of a, it's a tricky question to answer and it's very um, climate specific. Let's take my jumper off here. <laughs> Getting a little hot. Any more questions? It's just another question. Um, they might have missed it at the start. This is from um, our YouTube channel. Should you feed with one-to-one -one sugar syrup? midwinter or use granulated sugar? I would use granulated sugar midwinter. Um, having one-to-one -one syrup available for the bees might not be the best option. Um, having said that, if they're hungry, it's better to feed them something than nothing at all. Um, dry sugar can be a really great option because you know having liquid, <coughs> having liquid feed can drip down onto the cluster and cause problems. Um, some people like to put, as I said, like to put dry sugar on top of their inner cover. Other people pull out their brood frames and pour the um, granulated sugar straight into the cells. So you can really try and see what works for you, do a bunch of research and um, see how it goes, really. So I think that's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much.